I'm trying to be more positive generally. And I'm trying to keep these videos positive and optimistic, but flipping head, propeller head, you're making it really difficult. I, I try and give you the benefit of the doubt as a company in the direction you're taking things, but then I find out a new piece of information that makes me think that all you are, all you're turning into is a money hungry company that doesn't actually care about helping people make music anymore. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks for checking out my thoughts on Reason 11, that video, the most recent video I did, if you came from there. I've really been enjoying discussing everyone's opinions in the comments, so if you left a comment, thanks for the discussion. Wow, I was surprised at the, the number of people who had differing opinions about this announcement. There were strong views on both sides. I feel like I was kind of in the middle on the fence. I, I mean, I understood what a lot of the frustrations are around the Reason 11 announcement, but then there are also a lot of things that I'm excited for with this announcement. I feel like having this discussion with so many of you has really helped me kind of clarify my thoughts and my position around, you know, <laughs> Reason 11. I'm definitely going to be upgrading to the suite, but to be honest, Propellerhead as a company has broken my trust in a lot of the ways over the years and they're gonna have to do a lot next year for the Reason 12 update or whatever to convince me to give them more money. What I wanna see in future updates, and this is what I'm hoping for, I, like I'm willing to give Reason Studios the benefit of the doubt that they know where they're taking the product, but this is where I hope they're gonna go next year. I'm excited for the VST upgrade. The rack is a VST, but I hope they incorporate other aspects of Reason into it somehow. I want to see the rack and I want to see the sequencer and the VST. The way I envision this working is basically blocks on steroids inside another DAW or in a similar way to how the FL Studio step sequencer pattern thing works. That's what I want to see with the Reason rack VST. I want to see them incorporate the sequencer and the mixer and allow us to kind of do pattern based automation or step sequencing of kind of more complex stuff inside another DAW. If they incorporated that next year, I would pay to upgrade, I think that'd be sick. I'm also intrigued to see what they might do in terms of the Reason Compact app integration with Reason as a standalone application. That's what I want to explore in this video. I haven't used Reason Compact before, but I have it on my iPad, I downloaded it, and I want to try and make a beat with Reason Compact and then export that and open it up in Reason and see, just kind of see how it feels. See if, if there's actually any point in this app. And of course, all of the the usability features that everybody still wants that goes without saying that they need to add those hopefully in incremental updates over the year like if, if they roll it out over the next couple of months and over this year with incremental updates cool that'd be dope i think i think that's what everyone wants i've been messing around with the beta and it still took me literally five minutes before i was finding usability issues not not because it's a beta like not not because of that but because they still haven't addressed some of the functionality issues that kind of caused me to hit a wall in my production which is why I started exploring Ableton in the first place. Let's get into this, let's try and make a beat using Reason Compact. Let's start with the drum groove. Before we get into it, let's just talk about the thing that's just got to me today. That I, Reason Studios. Make music with an expanded set of creative tools, unlock narrow and gain access to all the advanced features. You can pay to unlock the rhythmic drum machine. And I was like, I was like, okay, you know, I'll spend $16 to upgrade my Reason Compact app and uh, use all the features. I was like, sweet, I'll do that. So I was, I was halfway through doing it with Europa. I was halfway through upgrading it and you'll notice if it click, if you click here, it says 
Europa synth. That got me concerned because this has three synths in it. So I hit cancel and I went to look on a line and I see down here in app purchases Europa synth $10 or sixteen ninety nine for me in New Zealand. Monotone bass synthesizer another ten dollars. Rhythmic drum machine another ten dollars. That means if I want to unlock the Rhythmic Drum Machine, the Monotone Synthesizer, and Europa in the Reason Compact app, I have to give Reason Studios another $50. Is it not enough that I have spent thousands of dollars with the company, that I own the full version of the product, I just have to buy it again on the, on the app? I have to pay them another $50? To use these synths that I already own that have more functionality and I'm not spending $50 to test out this app. I'm sorry Reason Studios but this is just dumb. <sighs> Alright, back to testing out Reason Compact. We're going to be working with the demo version because, mmm. Alright, let's, let's, start, let's start with the drums. Um, you know, we can hit the demo, we can see what's going on. I actually do think how they've integrated it in terms of the user interface on here is pretty cool. Let's just program a super basic four on the floor beat. I gotta say, I'm not digging those sounds. I wish there was a quicker way to search through these kicks. Like, I don't even know how many there are. I don't really like any of these kicks. And um, as far as I'm aware, unless you unless you buy more sounds with an in-app purchase, you're stuck with them. You can't load your own samples. Let's try to record in a clip and see what happens. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to record the... Uh, <laughs> the clap over top of the snare, but um, there's no counter. You just have to start playing. Oh, there's presets. That's interesting. That's cool. Wait a second. Okay. All right. So um, apparently, because I'm just using the demo, I can't actually change the sounds. So, whew, not even gonna bother. I do think it's cool, like how you can see all this, all these modules, like I think the way they've actually structured this instrument in terms of the, the mobile app is, uh, is dope, but um, we're not spending 50 bucks for this functionality, my gosh. And again, all of these are essentially unavailable because I'm not spending 50 bucks, so... We'll be using presets. I actually kind of like that first one. change the velocity. That's really sick. Okay, how do I extend? I'm finding 50% of the time I'm struggling to uh, hit these notes in terms of extending them. Ugh. I'm finding it weird composing with um, just the notes in the scale, like not seeing the whole piano roll. You can change that in here to make it chromatic. I'm not sure if I like it yet. This is so annoying. Come on, extend, there we go. Honestly? While I'm enjoying aspects of this user interface, 
I, I mean, I don't think I could use it purely because I'm finding it far too hard to extend notes. And that's really annoying. I also don't like that I can't zoom out and see the overall shape of my melody. Um, like, I find that quite helpful for trying to visualize where I want to go when I'm looking at a piano roll and uh, scrolling through it like this just doesn't have the same vibe. Let's switch it to chromatic and see how we feel. Oh, no, 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 no. Ugh. See, one of the good things about the Reason Piano Roll and the program is that each of the lines kind of indicates whether you're dealing with like a white key or a black key on the piano. This all looks the same. That's That will be basically impossible to use chromatically. Okay, there's no, there's no follow through either of the cursor. You've got to scroll manually. I'm also finding it really annoying that I can't start the melody halfway through. Like I'm writing a four bar bass line here, but I'm having to listen to it every single time to decide whether I like the last little bit that I've added to it. Which I'm finding is really slowing down my process because I don't like the last little bit that I've added, but then to hear it in context, I've got to go listen to the whole first half again. This is not an efficient way to be making music. See, I can't, I can't even remember what I didn't like about the last bit just now, so I've got to listen to it all again to even... I'm fed up with writing the bass line in the app. Let's test out the Europa bit and export it to the actual application and try to finish it there. No thank you. I don't even think I'm going to try <laughs> holding notes in this melody because I can't be bothered dragging. What? What is... I didn't put those in there. Okay, apparently, if you write something and then change the uh, change the uh, bar duration it loops it which is not necessarily a bad thing like if you've got a part and you want to kind of copy that part and just make some small adjustments in that situation it would be really really handy but it should give you the option of whether or not you want to loop it otherwise you have to go through and delete stuff I also find it ironic that the Reason Compact app has this feature where you can loop stuff essentially but the standalone version doesn't you still can't loop clips in the standalone version i'm sick of composing on this this is not fun at all export to reason 10 apparently i can do it by airdrop all right that was easy done did it save automatically though i don't know to be honest I don't really care because as it stands, I am finding Reason Compact far more frustrating than fun. Which makes me sad because I do think the way they actually have done the instruments in the app are really good. But that piano roll, whew, like first of all I thought it was kind of cool, then I started having struggles extending notes and and then it just got annoying not being able to zoom out or do anything like if I'm working on an idea for a beat which is was what I think this is aimed at right like this is this is what you would be doing with Reason Compact you don't have your laptop you don't have the standalone version so you're, you're working on an idea maybe doing some sound design but if I'm just working on a melodic idea I'd probably rather use voice memos on my iPhone and just hum something and then, like, you know, use a convert to MIDI feature later to bring it into, um, into, into Reason. And uh, in terms of sound design, sure you could probably do some sound design on 
resin compact, but oh, the synths are limited. There's only three, and you're paying fifty dollars for three synths that you already own. Oh, I just can't get past that point. Okay, this is interesting. What have, what have we got? What have we got here? Okay, this file is not set up using my keyboard presets. Wow. Which for me personally, that would be kind of a deal breaker because that would mean I'd have to set up my custom key binds all over again just to start working with this program. I suppose I could copy and paste the stuff into a session that does have my key binds, like my default session, but that's just an annoying extra step too. All right, so now that I'm in here in actual reason, I can control all this stuff. And this is what I don't understand. I can work in the demo in Reason Compact, which we've already established is lacking in areas, but the, the, the part of it that's not lacking is the integration of the actual instruments. I think they've done that well. So I can work in Reason Compact, but then I can't use parts of the synth, like the amplitude faders or anything, really. I'm stuck with preset sounds. I have to bring it into an actual reason session, and, and now I can? Oh, it just doesn't make sense to me, but... Watch how fast I can finish my melody now that I am in an actual DOW. start from here. I don't have to listen to the start every time. Oh, but I've looped this too, so you don't want that. I just want half of it. Am I dealing with... Let's just deal with a four bar loop here. See how much quicker that was? It's not that I don't think the yeah, could be quicker, I just think it's poorly optimized in terms of the piano roll. I actually kind of dig that jam, but I haven't done this before. I haven't I haven't used Reason Compact. This is my this is my first time using Reason Compact. And I wanted to, I wanted to give it a go because this was one of the aspects of where Reason Studio seems to be going that I thought was really interesting. I want to see better integration of Reason Compact with the standalone application. I would like to be able to use Reason Compact as kind of a remote uh, to control maybe, maybe the mixer or to control instruments. Imagine, imagine how dope it would be to have your iPad open right here with uh, like Reason Compact and have it reflecting the instruments that you have in the rack and make changes to the parameters as you go. Kind of like a dual window, but like a lot more tactile, a lot more hands-on. Or like imagine how dope it would be to have a mixer channel here that's, that would essentially be like a motorized fader. Like I've got a motorized fader on my keyboard here, which is super handy. But these ones, these ones here, don't don't automatically adjust like you could if you were using Reason Compact as a remote. There's so much potential. I think the way the piano roll and stuff 
is structured and reason compact at the moment is not good. It doesn't work. I enjoyed it for like two minutes and then started finding all kinds of workflow hassles that like, I wasn't even inspired to finish writing my baseline. And then I, then I pull it into the standalone app and finish it in far less time. And the standalone app will always be more powerful than an iPad app, obviously. But I want to see them do innovative stuff with the two working together in a way that, like at the moment, at the moment I feel like the, the Resin Compact is just a cheap copy to kind of make a little bit of music. Which is why I'm not gonna spend 50 bucks on it because I'm probably never gonna use it again unless they add more features to it. Like I said, I think the instruments, the way they're kind of actually utilized in here, are done quite well. But I really, really wanna see Reason Studios do some innovative stuff and take the product in a good direction. I am just becoming more and more skeptical that they're actually going to be able to do that. After trying Reason Compact, in its current capacity it's not, it's not any good. I'm never going to touch it again. I think there's so much potential and I really want them to do something cool with the standalone app. W one guy commented yesterday on a video and said basically, which was, which it, was a, it was a cool perspective, it was one that I hadn't thought of, he was like, now that the rack is a VST, which is basically Reason's core thing, they are going to have to compete with the features of the standalone application in order to remain competitive. And I hope they do, I hope they do. And I hope they do that by integrating Reason Compact because I think there's so much potential there, but I'm just, I'm just skeptical about it. Like, Reason Compact could be what the push is to Ableton. Reason doesn't have to create hardware. They could just create a really, really dope app that integrates super well with the standalone software. That would be sick. I'd be so into that. That would be a great time. Anyway. Guys, if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you've got any thoughts or feedback about Reason Compact. Have you used Reason Compact? I'm interested. I have been really enjoying discussing Reason 11 with everybody on, um, on my last video. Uh, so let's, let's keep the discussion going. Let's keep it happening. Until next time, guys. I will catch you later. I'm still beta testing Reason 11, so mm. let me know if there's anything you want me to, to try. I'm gonna be making some, some thorough reviews of both the VST and the standalone app when they come out. So let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to test. I will catch you guys later. Thanks for checking out the video.